The science of self-discipline, the willpower, mental toughness and self-control to resist temptation and achieve your goals by Peter Hollins. Peter Hollins first utilised self-discipline when he was bullied about his weight. He was not overweight, in fact the opposite. A lot of people refer to him as the stick man. Like most adolescents going through bullying, he took these insults to heart. But it wasn't until the help of his roommate, who was a football player, that he gained the discipline to eat enough every day to gain weight. You may be thinking, why does something like that require discipline? Eating more sounds like a piece of cake, but for anyone trying to gain weight, it's just as hard as only eating one meal a day. Eating in a caloric surplus day in day out can become very tedious, and in some cases a form of torture. But having the mental fortitude, regardless of the excuses that are popped up into Peter's head, he had not only gained the weight he wanted, but also the desirable trait of self-discipline, in which he used throughout his life to strive for success. It is estimated that the average human brain has some 100 billion neurons, which is equivalent to the same number of stars in the Milky Way galaxy. Therefore, it's no surprise that scientists have only scratched the surface in terms of neuron activity and the resulting outcome. Todd Hare and Colin Cameron in 2009 used Functional Magnetic Resonance Imaging Machines, or fMRI, in order to examine the brain activity of people who carried out certain tasks that require elements of self-discipline and self-control. The results showed activity in the brain area called the ventral medial prefrontal cortex and the dorsal lateral prefrontal cortex, a region of the brain's decision-making site, which showed heightened activity when making decisions that gave benefit in the long term, such as eating healthy. Exercising your self-control can significantly impact neuroplasticity which is the ability of the brain to form and recognise synaptic connections. A 2011 brain imaging study conducted by researchers re-examined volunteers who had participated as children in the Stanford Marshmallow experiment. Researchers found that those who were able to delay gratification in the original experiment had now more active prefrontal cortex, as well as differences in the ventral striatum, a region associated with addiction. The small differences in the original experiment had shown a significant difference in brain activity in later years. Due to our limited understanding of the brain, it is impossible to credit self-discipline to genetic predisposition without factoring in a person's environment and upbringing. What we can say confidently is, it is possible to change and improve self-discipline. As with any skill, the more you practice, the more better you can become at it. According to neuroscientists, there are three executive functions associated with self-discipline, working memory, impulse activity, and cognitive flexibility and adaptability. Together, these functions take place in brain regions such as the dorsal lateral prefrontal cortex, anterior cingular cortex, and the orbital frontal cortex. Just like self-discipline and willpower, you can target specific brain regions and improve them. Meditation has proven to increase blood flow to these areas and therefore improve executive functions. Meditation was shown to shrink the amygdala, which is responsible for primal emotions. Participants who meditate are less susceptible to emotional impulses and stress. Self-discipline is often sabotaged by trying to keep these emotions under control, so meditation can alleviate emotional stress and therefore can increase a person's focus and self-discipline. Willpower and discipline can become fatigued over time. Willpower depletion has shown to have reduced cognitive activity in the brain as well as lower blood glucose levels. A university conducted a study in 1996 measuring the phenomenon of willpower depletion. 67 participants were gathered. Some were allowed to eat freshly baked biscuits while others were not and were only given bitter radishes. They had to exercise their willpower. They then were given a puzzle. The subjects who only ate radishes gave up in half the time of the subjects who ate the biscuits. The study showed that depleted willpower can often lead to a person giving up easily when carrying out new tasks. For example, when going on a diet, eating healthy majority of the time whilst having a cheat meal or two occasionally allows you to stay disciplined as giving yourself the small break eases the pressure put on your discipline and willpower. Knowing the goal you want is essential for discipline. You must be able to name it, describe it and picture it. Otherwise, the goal may seem less meaningful and the sacrifices and discomfort will be rationalised by the brain as not worth it. Motivation plays a big role on self-discipline. Yes, many times you may not feel like doing things, but having that picture of your goal in your head and making improvements, seeing the progress, 
that's what keeps you motivated. Progression and improvement towards your goal is what keeps motivation linear and in turn improves your focus and self-discipline. A famous study by Dr. Edward DC took a different approach, looking at what factors help most with work engagement. DC measured how long it took participants to give up when solving a difficult puzzle. In the first part of the study, he split the participants into two groups. Group A were given a cash prize for solving the puzzle, while Group B were given nothing. The results were as expected, with Group A giving more time to solve the puzzle, whilst Group B gave up a lot earlier. In the second part of the study, the doctor had removed the cash prize for Group A. Yet again, as predicted, Group A had lost the motivation to try and solve the puzzle and gave up significantly early. However, surprisingly, Group B worked longer on the second part of the study than the first. In fact, Group B increased on the time spent on the puzzle in each session, despite never being offered a cash prize. On one hand, the study proved that money is a powerful short-term motivator, but in terms of long-term motivation, it appears that accomplishing a goal is a much stronger force. In this case, working on a puzzle for two consecutive days showed that accomplishing a goal is a more powerful motivator than the incentive of money. In addition to feelings of progress and investment, scientists have came up with three main categories of motivation, autonomy, mastery and purpose. Our desire of autonomy means that we want to be in control of our lives and call the shots. If two students were given a bridge to build, with one given the instructions, while the other student the liberty to build the bridge however they wanted. The student given the opportunity to build the bridge however they wanted is likely to be more invested and to go on and flourish in the task. The second motivator, mastery, refers to our innate urge to get better at things. Anybody driven by mastering their craft are much more likely to sacrifice and be disciplined in order to be the best they can in what they do. Also, as truly mastering a craft is impossible, there is a never-ending drive that comes with it. And then you have purpose, a feeling or intent that we can have an impact on the world. Discipline without purpose would just feel like pointless suffering. A medical student who does not feel the call to help people who are injured or sick would lack the energy, enthusiasm and focus than a doctor driven by this purpose. Desiring to live meaningfully and contribute to society is an integral part of being human. Whatever you hope to achieve in your life, it would be imperative if you could incorporate these three attributes as they will act as critical aids in the pursuit of your goals. When it comes to self-discipline and reaching your goals, the habit of self-discipline majorly outweighs motivation. You might be thinking, surely it has to be motivation because delaying gratification and accepting temporary discomfort is difficult to do without being highly motivated. While motivation is temporary, no matter how much you have of it, it is a reaction, an emotion, in which it fluctuates with time. Habits on the other hand are consistent and a necessity if you want to make self-discipline sustainable. Motivation is a great way to kickstart a habit. The University College London took 90 participants over a course of 12 weeks. The studies were based on how long habit formation takes. After analysing the data, it was found that on average it took 66 days for a daily action to become automatic. How long it takes you may depend on your existing habits and behaviour. A combination of motivation and self-discipline are critical when creating desirable habits. It is the creation of these habits that will become the determining factor of your success. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.